Every now and then, a Watchtower releases a study article which is so monumentally stupid, I just have to go out of my way to review it. This is one of those times. Welcome to the February 2024 Watchtower magazine. The first article is titled, I will never abandon you. The objective of the study is, I quote, to reassure God's servants on earth that they will not be abandoned when all the remaining anointed Christians have been taken to heaven. Because apparently, the governing body thinks that JWs are super scared at the thought of losing the faithful slave during the Great Tribulation. Some might wonder if the other sheep will stray from the truth when they no longer have the anointed brothers of the governing body to guide them. Absolutely no one is concerned about this. The governing body is just raising anonymous concerns as an excuse to talk about themselves. The study continues. For decades, the brothers of the governing body have been training men from among the other sheep to take the lead. So once the governing body is raptured to heaven, all their helpers are supposed to take the lead? Cool. I can't imagine Gary Bro taking the lead in anything. I think he's gonna ban pillows or something, but but we know the day will come when the current governing body will no longer be here because they will be six feet under. Bah. But what does the governing body imagine themselves doing once they arrive at Jesus' hood? Well, the Watchtower explains to us. But once resurrected to life in heaven, they will be mighty and immortal spirit creatures assigned to fight alongside their warrior king, Jesus Christ. These two paragraphs were taken directly from Samuel Hurd's talk from the 2022 annual meeting, where he relishes the thought of killing people in Armageddon. I'm not joking. So when the anointed are called to heaven, one of the first assignments is to fight. Okay. Now that's interesting. Some of us were fighters before we became true Christians. Some even served in various branches of the military. Didn't they? <laughs> Brother Morris. Some were Green Berets. Uh, not Brother Morris. <laughs> but in heaven, we will serve along with Christ and his holy angels, waging the final war against God's enemies. So if you've ever thought that you might feel left in the lurch after the anointed are taken to heaven, think of this. On earth, none of us Christians are allowed to fight. Many of us anointed ones are too old to fight, even if we were allowed to. But in heaven, we will be mighty spirit creatures fighting alongside our warrior king, Jesus Christ. Believe me, we can and will do you significant more good in heaven than we ever could as imperfect humans here on this earth. This man dreams of the day when he systematically destroys all enemies of Jehovah, aka anyone who doesn't submit to his authority. Okay. Just hear that grunt, it's so primal, it came from his heart, and the audience just laps it up. So whenever JWs brag about being the most peaceful people on the earth, just show them that clip. And of course, the Watchtower makes no mention of Tony Morris, Brother Morris, because that man was never part of the governing body. Oh my word. So far we've learned that the governing body can't wait to destroy 8 billion souls, but believe me, it gets worse. Ka boom. Article 2. Praise the name of Jehovah. So here's another bold claim. Jesus used the name of God. How much evidence do we have for this? Zero! <laughs> that means it's nothing! Because by the first century, Jews did not pronounce the name of God. It was too sacred. Saying Yahweh out in public would have been seen as blasphemy. Second, the divine name is not in the New Testament, and Watchtower knows this because we have no manuscripts of the Greek scriptures that contain the divine name. Yet they go out of their way to insert it into the New Testament more than 200 times. For example, in Mark 5.19 in the New World Translation, they just inserted the word Jehovah right smack in the middle. 
and look what they have to say. The evidence strongly suggests that Mark originally used the divine name in this quotation from Jesus. It has thus been restored in the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. See the study note on this verse. So I checked the study note for the verse and it claims, although most Greek manuscripts read the Lord, Kyrios, here at Mark 5.19, there are good reasons to believe that the divine name was originally used in this verse and later replaced with the title of Lord. Therefore, the name Jehovah is used in the main text. So Watchtower claims that there's good reason to believe that the divine name was originally in Mark, but they just don't provide any evidence for it. They just tease the evidence, but don't actually show any of it. Why? Because it was never there, and most Bible scholars would agree with me. Another trash article. Article 4. Keep following Jehovah's guidance, aka the governing body's guidance. Imagine you are lost in a forest. Danger lurks around you. Wild animals, disease-carrying insects, poisonous plants, and rocky terrain. How grateful you would be for an experienced guide who knows where the danger is and how to steer you away from it. This world is like that forest. It is filled with danger that specially threatens our spiritual health. But we have a perfect guide, Jehovah. He leads us away from the danger and towards our destination everlasting life in the new world. How does Jehovah guide us? Primarily by means of his written word, the Bible. However, he also uses human representatives. For example, he uses the faithful and discreet slave to provide spiritual food that helps us make wise decisions. Because of course he does. Jehovah guides us primarily by means of the Bible, but the only ones able to interpret it correctly are these lovely men from New York. How convenient. Even so, we might occasionally find it a challenge to follow Jehovah's guidance, especially when it is conveyed by imperfect men. Why? The counsel may conflict with our likes or dislikes. Or we might feel that the direction we receive is unwise and conclude that the counsel must not be from Jehovah. At such times, we especially need confidence that Jehovah is the one leading his people and that following his guidance results in blessings. So, even if we dislike the counsel we receive and believe that it's not coming from Jehovah, we have to gaslight ourselves into believing it does? Wow, this piece of advice could totally not be exploited by cult leaders, right? Now comes my favorite illustration in the magazine. Ta-da! From ancient times to the present day, Jehovah has used human representatives to guide his people. So, the governing body are the modern-day Moses and Apostles, except instead of miracles, all they can do is make fools out of themselves in front of the millions. I hope you don't think I'm that stupid. <laughs> this picture will probably seem familiar to you, and that's because we've seen it before, with Toni Morris in it. Yes, boys and girls, instead of just taking a brand new photograph for the propaganda, the governing body just told the art department to Photoshop Tony out of the picture and insert three other cult leaders instead. I have to admit, it's not a bad Photoshop job, but too bad Watchtower thinks we have the collective memory of a goldfish. You will never replace Uncle Tony, you stupid lizard man. That feels like that Stalin photo where he just removes one of his buddies. <laughs> I wonder how Tony must feel when he sees this photoshop. All oh, the money I would be willing to spend to just have an interview with that man. Anyways, this atrocious photo reminds us that JWs must follow the governing body as if they were following to Jesus himself. Then we get this silly illustration which we know is based on a fable. How do we know the exodus didn't happen as the bible described? Because we know through the historical record that at the time the exodus was supposed to happen, you know, between 1400 and 1200 BCE, Egypt controlled most of the Levant. So if the Israelites escaped into Sinai, they would not have left the Egyptian bondage. They would have walked from Egypt to Egypt, since all of this was ruled by Egypt. That, and we also have zero archaeological evidence of a mass migration out of Egypt, that fits the exodus timeline. You would expect that 3 million people leaving out of Egypt would have left some type of evidence of their stay in Sinai. They were there for 40 years. But instead of that we have 
nothing. This story did not happen. Anyways, the paragraph claims that the Israelites had ample evidence that Jehovah was using Moses to guide them. And if we pretend that all these stories did actually happen, then yes, Moses did have clear evidence of being God's representatives. He performed miracles, he parted the Red Sea. When his opponents tried to trash talk him, they were literally swallowed by the earth. But can the governing body do any of that? Nope. Zero miracles. And since the governing body can't prove their divine backing by performing a miracle, like Moses so often did, why should the rank and file trust them? Why have some rejected clear evidence that Jehovah is using human representatives to guide his people? In many cases, it has been because of selfish motives. For example, some Israelites refused to accept Moses as a divinely appointed guide because they were overly concerned with their own status. For similar reasons, many rejected Jesus despite the miracles he performed. On the other hand, humble ones with a heartfelt love of truth have seen the powerful evidence that Jehovah is using appointed men to guide his people. Following that guidance always leads to blessings. You heard it right, boys and girls. If you reject the evidence that Jehovah is using the faithful slave, that means you are selfish, arrogant, and have no love for the truth. Can we see evidence that God has also continued to use human representatives? Yes. Consider, for example, certain developments that took place in the late 1800s. Charles Taze Russell and his associates began to discern that the year 1914 would mark a turning point regarding the establishment of God's kingdom. Uh, no. Charles Taze Russell believed Armageddon would come in 1914. You would know this if you read his literature. So his failed predictions point to the obvious. Russell and his successors were not being led by Holy Spirit. Today, the members of the governing body continue to look to Christ for guidance. They want the instructions they give to the brothers to reflect heaven's view of matters. In turn, circuit overseers and elders provide direction to the congregations. Anointed elders are in Christ's right hand. Of course, these elders are imperfect and make mistakes. Moses and Joshua erred at times, as did the apostles. Still, Christ is carefully guiding the faithful slave and the appointed elders, and he will continue to do so all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. Matthew 28, 20. We therefore have every reason to trust the guidance that he is providing through those appointed to take the lead. <laughs> yeah, Moses and the apostles made mistakes, but I never heard of them making failed doomsday predictions, or covering up CSA in an industrial scale. Is this really what you count as evidence? Oh yeah, bro, we look to Christ for guidance, therefore you should follow all our dumb rules and send us all your money. Tony Morris, who is that? He was never part of the governing body. Listen, obey, and be blessed. And you would imagine that the governing body circle jerk would be over by now, but you would be wrong because we get an introduction to the two latest additions to the group, which is a couple of months too late. This is Gak Flegel with his wife, who looks much younger than him, not surprised at all. And turns out that Flegel is a polyglot actually, having served in the Russian, Portuguese, and Spanish ministry. Hey Gak Flegel, si estás viendo este video, solo te quiero decir Gracias por darnos tanto material para hacer memes, we. Vete a la verga. Prophet Winder also has a photo with his trophy wife, but he doesn't seem to speak other languages besides English and Kool-Aid. And both of these blokes were indoctrinated from birth. And the magazine ends with a final fuck you to Jehovah himself. When Watchtower claims that Jehovah can actually set limitations for himself and that he can, quote, choose to not know what will happen in the future? So Watchtower admitted that Jehovah doesn't know everything. Isn't this like blasphemous? It's, it feels like blasphemy. No wonder Jehovah has made so many false predictions in the past. He was limiting himself from knowing the future. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. And this boys and girls 
is the doctrinal nonsense that JWs are subjected to every week. Study articles which long for the destruction of all unbelievers <laughs> blatantly disregard biblical scholarship and encourage blind obedience to nine old farts in New York. I'm so happy to be out. I want to thank all my Patreons and channel members who keep this channel going and thank you for 11,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with a friend or leave a comment with your thoughts. This channel would be nothing without this beautiful community. Thank you everyone for your support. Don't forget to think critically, live your best life, and stay away from the tower. Holy cow guys, I made it into paradise. All I had to do was repent right before the great tribulation. Meek ones will thrive, said the psalmist. This grand future is sure. Caleb and Sophia have escaped their three-dimensional purgatory and were raptured into a cozy 2D animation. So what is this Iron Age prophet supposed to be teaching the kids? <laughs> that the earth is a flat disk with a firmament on top? <laughs> this is what happens when you kill off all your scientists. Well, I gotta give Watchtower some credit because they do know how to sell paradise to the children by promising them snacks and pet tigers. That's it. That's the appeal. Of course, they don't show the kids how they're gonna have to be scraping bodies off the asphalt right after Armageddon. Caleb is a teenager now? You mean they're not gonna remain children forever? And which biblical atrocity are they hearing about now? So many questions, not enough answers. <laughs>